Hey everyone, today I decided to put together a video on something that unfortunately kind of gets glossed over uh, when training on these aircraft and and yet it's a really important topic is just how to set up a cabin and and make it look really nice and uh, and be as clean as possible and just in order for um, whatever passengers are going to be flying on the airplane. Um, a lot of times in training we focus so much on how to fly a single engine ILS and um, how to have an engine failure on takeoff or, you know, all these different, uh, scenarios that are super important for safety. But then because we need to spend so much time on those things, uh, we don't really talk a lot about how to make sure the cabin is put in order for passengers. As part of the pre-flight routine, uh, I encourage everyone to do their safety checks first. So do their cockpit inspection, their exterior inspection, and and make sure that the aircraft is safe to fly. And then as soon as they've got all those things done to move into the cabin and do a, a good inspection of the cabin to make sure that the cabin um, is suitable for whoever's gonna be flying that day um, as passengers. So uh, the thing to remember, uh, especially for new pilots is this is a, a million dollar, sometimes multi-million dollar aircraft that we're operating and the passengers are oftentimes worth millions of dollars. And, uh, we really don't want them to get an experience like they're flying on a Greyhound. Uh, that, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but, uh, you know, we, we really want the cabin to be looking super sharp and clean and, uh, have everything that they need handy. And, uh, that's what we're doing when we go through the interior of the cabin. So let's start with the basics. First things first, Take a look at all the um, the aisle of the aircraft and the carpet in between the seats. Make sure that there's no crumbs or wrappers or anything like that down here. Uh, we want to make sure that if the aircraft needs to be vacuumed, um, we get it really well vacuumed. And the same for up on the seats. So like the top of the seats here, uh, make sure that there's no crumbs or anything left behind. Uh, that's super easy to, uh, to miss. Uh, say a plane comes in late at night and uh, the cabin is dark or you're just kind of going off of a flashlight to get things cleaned up at the end of a trip, um, it, it's easy for the previous crew to miss those details. Another detail that I often sometimes see overlooked is making sure that the seat back pockets are clean and free of any uh, garbage or anything. So here we've got the, uh, the safety briefing card and some air sick bags, but that is pretty much the only thing you should find in the back of these seat back pockets. You you should check the seat back pockets before every flight and make sure that nobody left any trash back there. Another gotcha is the cup holders. Please make sure that the cup holders are completely free of any trash. Uh, a lot of times um, passengers will leave gum wrappers or just some little uh, you know, candy wrapper or something that they have in their pocket. Um, they leave that in the cup holder. And if you just do a quick glance from an angle like that, you know, it, it, it looks clear and empty. And then if you actually look at it from above, um, that's when you, you notice that they left stuff behind. So make sure to check every cup holder on the aircraft. And, uh, that would not be a good thing to have a passenger sit down and see somebody else's trash left behind. We also holder. need to make sure that the tables are clean. So in the Citation Ultra here, we've got uh, four tables. There's two tables in the middle of the aircraft and uh, one table or um, two tables in the rear uh, with the last row of seats. And uh, if we expand that out, uh, we want to make sure that there's no like uh, water rings or soda rings like uh, from a drink that was sitting here or um, some salad dressing if they were eating a salad or whatever. You, who knows what you're going to find. The seat backs should all be upright when the cabin is first set up for the first flight of the day. So it's uh, not necessarily obvious all the time. Like I reclined this seat a little bit as an example, and uh, we just wanna make sure that the seat backs are all upright. So if we need to um, bring a seat, seat back upright, we open the armrest like that, and you've got a button in here. Squeeze that button. and the seat back comes up uh, forward. So make sure that those are all the way upright because that's actually a, a safety issue for um, if we were to have some sort of incident on takeoff and the, the seat back was reclined, that uh, could be a dangerous situation for whoever's sitting there. Another detail to note with these seats is this uh, 
lever on the front of the armrest can be lifted up and used to, that will, um, when it's lifted up, it will allow the seat to release and swivel out into the aisle and um, move away from the wall, which is really nice for passengers who are taller or have broader, broader shoulders. It gives them some extra headroom and uh, leg room if they swivel it out at an angle towards the aisle. And um, the downside to that arrangement is that it's possible for trash to get trapped between the seat and the wall paneling. This is an example of what the seat looks like when it's uh, moved out away from the wall and towards the aisle. And uh, I actually, in the course of making this video, discovered that uh, the pilot I was flying with today should have done a little better job maybe, because check that out. There's a, a napkin that slid down there. And that's exactly the kind of trash I'm talking about where uh, it's super easy to lose uh, who knows what down there. Uh, you know, even things as, as nice as cell phones or whatever I've had passengers um, lose down in that crevice. When it comes to crossing seat belts, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, this is kind of my personal preferred method. The The main thing here that you need to be thinking about with seat belts is, of course, when, when passengers get into the cabin, you want it looking neat and tidy and, and organized. You don't want to just have seat belts laying all over the place. Um, and uh, what I like doing is, is tucking one end of the seat belt into the gap with the armrest and then just crossing the other part of the buckle over. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, planes that I've seen set up have the seat belt actually buckled and I kind of, uh, don't like that method quite so well because to me it encourages passengers to not wear their seat belt. They sit down over top of a buckled seat belt and they pull on it and it doesn't come out easily and they can't figure out what's going on and they say, ah, forget it. I'm just not going to wear the seat belt today. Another detail to be looking at is in the lavatory in the back of the airplane. We want to get back here for a minute and actually open up the seat lift that seat cushion up and make sure that the bowl is clean and the knife valve is open so that if somebody flushes the lab, it's not gonna make a big mess. That looks all clean and ready to go for whoever needs to use it. Now, as far as stocking the airplane goes, we've got these drawers down here uh, underneath the seats in the center of the cabin. And my preference is to have these full to the point that they're like there's plenty there that people don't have to think, man, they didn't really give me much on this flight. But at the same time, we don't want to stuff this so full that the drawer is hard to slide in and out because that also gets annoying where it's just crammed full so that it's like catching on the rails as you're trying to open the drawer. And, and that's uh, kind of obnoxious also. Up here at the front of the airplane in the front galley cabinet, we have a selection of mini liquor bottles. And uh, this is something that we just want to have uh, a wide selection of also, make sure that there's plenty in there and, and if anything needs to be replaced, uh, restock that. We also have our uh, coffee cups and regular drinks, drink cups for uh, cold drinks stocked here. Make sure that there's plenty of those cups The last available. item here, but certainly not the least, is uh, it varies from airplane to airplane that we operate, but um, usually somewhere towards the front of the airplane, either in the front galley cabinet or in this airplane, it's uh, in this drawer with the forwardmost uh, seat right behind the cockpit. We have all our odds and ends. So in here, notice that we have a roll of trash bags um, to collect trash with. We have several sets of gloves for um, servicing the lav. If we need to pull the lav out, you can wear those rubber gloves to keep your hands clean. Uh, and uh, some plastic cutlery, if passengers ask for that, we have something on board to eat with. And um, something that is oftentimes overlooked but super important to have on board is a seatbelt extender. Um, that seatbelt extender obviously is, needs to be there for any passenger who's uh, large enough that the, the regular seatbelt is not reaching all the way around them uh, so that we can offer that to the passenger because let's say you have a, a large passenger get on and um, they can't get the seatbelt on. Well, now what are you going to do? Uh, you, you can't fly. You can't just blast off and fly with passengers who are not buckled. Um, but at the same time, if you don't have that seatbelt extender on board or you can't find it, that's going to be a problem. And then to a lesser extent, it comes in handy when um, passengers show up with some huge bag of some kind. And for whatever reason, you can't get the bag into the main uh, baggage area. You can carry it in the cabin. But the only way to safely and legally carry it in the cabin is to have it buckled into a passenger seat. So uh, if it's a if it's a really large bag, sometimes you can't get the 
regular seat belt around it and uh, you need that seat belt extender to safely strap the, the baggage in.